Our next speaker is Julia Moriarty. Julia is a professor at the University of Colorado Boulder as well. Um, and she's going to talk about variability in marsh estuary sediment exchanges in uh, back barrier systems. Bark in the Bay uh, in New Jersey. Sorry if I... Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Go ahead. And it's uh, Barnegat Bay. And so thanks, Albert, and to the CSDMS IF team for organizing this series. Today, I'll be talking about some work I started um, at the USGS as a postdoctoral fellow with Neil Ganju. Julia? Also called, oh, yeah? All right, we're seeing your presenter view. Can you flip the screen to show the slide? Yeah, how? Do you know uh, how to do that? Try, do you have two screens? Yeah. You have to share. Try sharing PowerPoint directly versus the screen. Okay. If you start the presentation and then switch to Zoom and then share screen, you can point to the slide. So share PowerPoint. So, and then yeah, start like the that? slides. There you go. There you go. Okay. Great. It. You're, you're up. Okay. Um, okay. So um, this work was done with colleagues at USGS. Um, and specifically today, I'll be talking about part of the work focusing on spatial variability in marsh estuarine sediment fluxes in Barnegat Bay, New Jersey, which is a back barrier estuary. Um, so in terms of the sediment exchanges specifically, I'll be talking about marsh edge erosion, which is the process by which waves uh, and other and currents erode the sediment from the edge of the marsh, and then also deposition on the marsh platform or the marsh surface. And we're interested in these sediment exchanges because they affect marsh changes in marsh geomorphology, which then affect the ability of marshes to provide ecosystem services, including habitat, carbon burial, as well as protection from storms. Specifically, we used a numerical modeling approach um, and we implemented the coast model, um, which is a coupled ocean atmosphere wave sediment transport model uh, for Barnegat Bay, New Jersey. This coast model includes uh, the hydrodynamic model ROMS, as well as the SWAN uh, wave model and the CSTMS sediment transport model. So this is um, a very similar modeling setup to what Kevin was describing a few talks ago. We implemented the model for Barnegat Bay, New Jersey, um, which as I mentioned is a back barrier system. You can see an aerial image of it on the top right. And then on the left-hand side, you can um, see the, the symmetry that, um, of the system that we put into the model. So as an introduction to Barnegat Bay, it is um, bordered on its oceanward side by two long barrier islands and characterized by um, two um, inlets. So in the south, you have Little Egg Inlet down here. And then in the center, you have Barnegat Inlet on the right-hand side. These green areas are marshes. And so you can see um, there's large marshes in the southern portion of the bay. And then you get these smaller patchier marshes in the northern um, portion of Barnegat Bay. And the bathymetry is pretty shallow. It's only a couple meters deep. And these, the location of these channels is going to come back um, throughout the talk. Or sorry, the location of the inlets is going to be uh, important. OK, so we implemented, um, as I mentioned, the coast model. And we chose this model. And it had previously been implemented uh, to look at sediment transport during Hurricane Sandy. Um, but for this study, we also took advantage of some of the recent coast uh, upgrades or um, new processes that have been incorporated into coast, including the vegetation hydrodynamic feedbacks based on Bowdoin et al, um, as well as the marsh edge erosion which um, is, um, allows sediment to be eroded from the edge of marsh grid cells and put into the estuary where it can then be transported and redistributed within the estuarine marsh system. And this, we assume that this edge erosion at the edge of the marsh was proportional to wave thrust. Uh, so areas with higher, more energetic waves and higher water levels um, to a point will erode more material from the edge of the marsh. Okay, so then we took this model, as I mentioned, we implemented it for Barnegat Bay. Oh, um, and uh, 
So the first, one of the first things we looked at was time averaged uh, maps of the hydrodynamic conditions as well as marsh edge erosion. So here on the left hand side, you're looking at time average bed shear stress uh, with the darker colors. For all these maps, the darker colors indicate higher values or faster rates. And then for the middle panel, you're looking at depth integrated suspended sediment concentration. And then on the right, you're looking at both wave thrust and marsh edge erosion. Um, remember, these are proportional to each other, so they can be shown on the same plot. One thing I want you to notice is that for um, the hydrodynamic conditions, as well as the edge erosion, these, you had the higher values near the inlets of the system. This is because you're getting fast tidal currents and um, propagating in and out. You're getting waves propagating into the estuary, and that's driving these higher, these more energetic hydrodynamics that are then causing these higher values of wave thrust uh, near the inlets. This is especially true in Little Egg Inlet, although, um, and a little bit less true here, although because the um, energetic hydrodynamics are more limited um, and don't affect this shore across from it as much. So then after looking at the spatial variability in marsh edge erosion, we started looking at how sediment that's eroded as well as sediment that's resuspended from the estuary itself is making its way back onto the marsh or the degree to which it is. And so for um, one of the, um, in order to look at this, I'm gonna show you a scatter plot of modeled deposition on the marsh platform on the Y axis on a log plot and then on the x-axis, um, you're looking at distance to a high thrust region. So remember, that's really going to be these areas near the inlets, um, as well as this area um, that's downstream of this uh, estuarine channel right here. And so when you're looking at this, the, the areas near high thrust, those are the areas near high thrust regions. And you can see as you get closer to these high thrust regions, so as you get closer to the zero, distance of zero, you're getting more deposition on the marsh platform. A secondary effect was this distance to estuarine channel, but um, part of this effect was also incorporated into the distance to high thrust region. And so in conclusion, we've um, we implemented a hydrodynamic wave sediment transport model, which accounted for marsh edge erosion, as well as the presence of vegetation for this back barrier estuary in New Jersey. Um, for a four month period in 2012. Um, and we saw that for both erosion from the edge of the marsh as well as deposition back on top of the marsh, um, that these rates were higher near areas of um, energetic waves or high wave thrust, um, which is to say primarily near um, inlets. Um, and with that, I will end it. I think I'm right at seven minutes and thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, so Julia gave the, the last talk here. Um, are there any questions for Julia? I realize we're a little bit over time, but I think one or two questions should be possible. If not, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you one one question, Julia. So a little bit inspired by uh, Yat Nienhuis talk about sea level change, do you, if you, or, or would your model, uh, could, could your model, uh, you know, accommodate sea level rise if you look at longer time periods and, and, and still take into account uh, vegetation? Uh, have you done s some long-term runs or? Yeah, so this um, is a pretty slow model. Right. So um, for right now, we're limited in terms of um, it's um, we've only really done model runs on the time scales of months. So but in terms of I think you were getting at sea, uh, how would sea level rise affect the results? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Is so one of the main rate ways that would affect the results is that wave thrust. Um, it increases as the water level reaches the edge of the marsh. And so, but then once the water level exceeds the height of the marsh, and more um, of the energy from the wave starts propagating um, over the marsh edge into the marsh itself, you start actually getting lower values of wave thrust. 
and um, so lower erosion rates. And then of course, as the sea level rises, the marshes flood more, that can trap more sediment because there's more accommodation space on top of the marsh as well. So it sort of um, would accelerate, um, like they accelerate these processes. That's Assuming the sediment, you know, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, let's see if there is another question. If not, then then this, oh, I see one uh, question of Pani. Uh, Juan, can you, um, you can unmute yourself and ask, ask the question. Oh, thank you. I, I, I wasn't sure how to do this. Uh, hi, Julia. This is a, just a curiosity. Out of curiosity, how do you define the wave thrust? I just... Yeah, so wave thrust is the depth integrated dynamic pressure at the vertical edge of the marsh scarp. And so how we found it is we took estimates of wave properties from the, um, uh, so um, we took estimates from the Swan wave model as well as water levels from the ROMS hydrodynamic model to estimate wave thrust. And then going a little bit beyond that, because the marsh edge is sort of at the edge of the grid cells and not in the center, uh, we did some interpolation to get the um, wave thrust at the marsh edge itself. Well, thank you. Thank you, very interesting. Thank you for your question, Pani. And thank you, Julia, for, for your presentation. Thank all speakers for your presentation. Now, before